Well, what I'm going to present um, is also in my book, but I haven't brought any, neither the book, neither uh, a publicity, but uh, I'm sorry for that. Um, so the question of perversion in literature is a landmark of the 20th century French philosophy. Bataille, Klosowski, Foucault, Blanchot, Barthes, all have recognized in the art of the writing a privileged access to the universe of the problematization of sex as a pleasure mixed with suffering. But in all these authors, in Bataille's La Littérature et le Mal, or L'Erotisme, in Klosowski's Sad Mon Prochain, in Blanchot, L'Autre Yamant et Sad, or lately in Foucault's Sad, Sergent du Sex, or even in Barthes' Sad Fourier Loyola, the perverse pleasure as the model of the pleasure of the text and as an instrument of entering the nature of literary fiction is always approached from Sad. Leleuze was the first to take Mazok as a starting point. It was not a question of being against the dominant trend. Arguably, one of Deleuze's most significant contributions to understand the relationship between literature and perversion it stems from the fact that he thought it mainly as a masochist experience. Masochism, coldness and cruelty seems to be the most classical approach of the issue of literature which can be found in Deleuze. From its very beginning, this book is a research of the nature and the role of perversion and Sad and Masoch are analyzed as examples of what Deleuze calls a literary efficiency. The erotic functions of languages, of language, sorry, negation at sad and denial and suspense at Mazok, the roles of women and the presence of the father in their novels, the narrative elements of institution and contract, all this is approached from the interior of an attempt to think the effects of the novel. However, the question of effectiveness of literature in Sad and Mazok concerns, concerns a specific function in literature namely the clinical function of giving a particular form to and of separating the mechanisms of each perversion. Literary efficiency consists in Sads and Mazok's ability to draw up the clinical signs of their own perversions. According to Deleuze, in order to understand the orig originality of Zak and Mazok, we need to return to an exterior point of the clinical which for a long time misunderstood them. It is possible to remove some effects of the perversion from the work of Sad and Mazok. Sorry, if it is possible to remove some effects of the perversion from the work of Sad and Mazok, it is because, first of all, they were writers, because they knew how to describe their perversion in an artistic and original way. Between Sad and Mazok, the relation between the critical and clinical matter because ve becomes very clear, almost transparent. Their literary work expresses the force of two types of sexuality, of two types of signs or symptoms, which according to Deleuze, have been misunderstood by medicine as syndrome, as a sadomasochist unit. And I quote, because judgment of the clinician is prejudiced, we must take an entirely different approach, the literary approach, since it is from literature that stem the original definitions of sadism and masochism. End of the quote. So therefore, one must go back to the point where their name was lead to the classification of an illness. One must thus challenge the medicine assumptions which, according to Deleuze, haunted these two separated modes of sexuality. One must also reverse the presupposition that there is a sadomasochist unit. Understanding the specificity of the masochist and the sadist signs means understanding that they designate symptoms and not syndromes, which means a perversion and not a disease. The literary effectiveness as a critical problem concerns the clinical problem of the phantasm doubling the world. But this fictional process of the masochist writer returns back to a broader clinical problem, that of an anthropology of the clinic of civilization. More than symptom symptom symptomatologists, more than the expression of the connection of their own name to a set of signs of a perversion, that means more than a classification of two perversions, Sad and Mazok are also anthropologists. And reclaiming Nietzsche's thesis, Deleuze here anticipates critical and clinical 
and its definition of literature as a matter of health. Masochism, Cold and Cruelty, is the first book where Deleuze takes a writer to think the clinical problem as essential to all artists, not only as a literary critic, but also as a matter of minorities. And I quote again, Masoch's work is deeply influenced, influenced by the problems of nationalities, minority groups, and revolutionary movements in the empire. End of the quote. So Sada Mazok are therefore the laboratory that better allow us to see and to understand literature as a matter of symptology. According to Deleuze, they have created through literature new, new forms of life, new forms of thinking and feeling. In their texts, language gathers meaning, becomes active, literal, acting directly on the senses and on sensuality. Sadism is the conflict between two levels, the negative of the second nature and the ego, moi, and the pure negation as the idea of a first nature. However, the first nature is never given. It can never be given, because it does not belong to the world of experience. Therefore, it cannot be object of description nor demonstrated. The big problem that Sad puts forth is whether a pain of the experience world can rightly rightfully be repeated to infinity in the world of the first nature. Sadistic monotony is the demonstration by induction of this problem, that is the demonstration of the possibility of repetition of personal pain in the sphere of the impersonal. This demonstration is done by both acceleration and condensation of movements of partial violence. The sadistic is the one who leaves the absolute negation of the world. He creates a division between an original nature, which corresponds to his requirements, which means the nature of pure negation as a reason's idea, and the second nature, where negative replaces negation and arises as the opposite of a positivity and a partial process of destruction. So the sadistic lives in the gap between these two natures. He is in permanent frustration because he always confronts himself with the fact that the nature he idealizes is only given in experience and also with the fact that the real nature is less painful and less cruel than the original one. And I quote again, Hence the rage and despair of sadistic hero when he realizes how paltry his own crimes are in relation to the idea which he can only reach through the omnipotence of reasoning. The task for the libertine is to bridge the gulf between the two elements, the element of his actual disposal and the elements in his mind, the derivative and the original, the personal and the impersonal." End of the quote. So the libertine creates a system to know whether and how a pain in the second nature can be produced to infinity in the first nature. And this system requires two procedures. On one hand, the acceleration or precipitation, which is the multiplication and the continuing reproduction, reproduction of victims and their pain. Sad built a detailed mapping of perversions of pain of the victims, which must be carefully observed. On the other hand, the condensation and accumulation, which is the requirement of the coldness of violence, which means the requirement of a rational, total, impersonal, and motivational violence, which does not deviate by any pleasure that would lead it to the second nature. Sadistic violence derives from the annulment of the second nature, of the sentimental me, who only knows violence within its limits of sensor sensor sensorial partiality. It is throughly descriptive to extend, to accelerate and to condense the partial pain in the second nature. So sadistic violence is a rational act from where derives the pleasure of all an almost mathematical demonstration of the repetition in the first nature. Repetition in Masoch is different. It is no longer the negation of a world as a second nature and the infinite setting of pain in the original nature, but the denial of the world, that is to say, its suspension in an ideal fantasme, the world as phantasm. Denial is the operation that does not negate nor even destroys any dimension of the experience, but rather contests the solid foundations of the state of affairs of what exists. The center of the denial is the woman's fake castration. The masochist says that the woman does not miss a penis, so he can produce the fetish, 
the image or the substitute of a feminine phallus. Therefore, the fetish belongs essentially to masochism in order to transform the woman to whom he denies the absence of a penis in an instance of product protective and idealizing neutralization. The fetish constitutes itself as an autonomous object. It is not a question of negating or destroying the world, but of idealizing it as a dream, as a phantasm, to which the ideal is itself returned back to. Denial leads to the suspension of the movement of desire in order to transform it into phantasm, into an idealized world that condenses frozen postures, photographic scenes in an internal repetition. And I quote, the static and dramatic suspense of Mazok contrasts with the mechanical cumulative repetition of sad, and not to quote. Sadistic repetition is accelerant, but masochist repetition is suspensive. It suspends the real to fix it into a phantasm. It is a repetition that refers to the imagination since, since it repeats a denial based on an ideal of imagination. Mazok does not believe in negating or destroying the world, nor in idealizing it. What he does is to disavow and thus to suspending it by denying it, in order to secure an ideal which is itself suspended in the phantasm. He questions the valid validity of existing reality in order to create a pure ideal reality. So the masochist denies the real, the real world in order to fix himself in an ideal of his imagination, itself frozen and embodied in phantasm. Masochism is then a pure contemplation, a mystic contemplation of the real. This is why masochist repetition is a process of an infinite deferral dif of the ideal, of the phantasm of pleasure. Pain is repeated to fail, to, to fail the result, to suspend the moment of pleasure. And I quote again, the masochistic process of denial is so extensive that it affects sexual pleasure itself. Pleasure is postponed for as long as possible and thus denied. The masochist is therefore able to deny the reality of pleasure at the very point of experiencing it in order to identify with the new man, sexless man." End of the quote. Hence, the importance in masochism of fetishism, of reads of suffering with the real physical suspensions, of frozen poses of the executor, executioner woman that make her appear as a statue and a portrait or photo. Repetition has therefore in sadism and in masochism two quite different forms depending on what it finds its meaning in sadistic acceleration and condensation or in masochistic freezing and suspense. In Sad and Masoch, Deleuze describes the novel as a perverse case. Deleuze wants to explain the act by which the language exceeds itself reflecting a body of desire in order to constitute with words another body, a glorious body full of new pleasures for pure spirits. This is the act of the description of the flesh and its transgression, but the trans transgression of language by language. According to Deleuze, the perverse device in literature merges with the movement itself of fictional production. It is a fiction of the double, of the reiteration of facts, but as their impossible and excessive archive. This fiction affects directly the sensuality. It seeks to spiritualize, to make it a pure effect of the language. Sad and Mazok confabulate worlds as any literature, but not possible, darker or more glorious worlds. They make detailed description of this world, but as it excessive double. With Sad and Mazok, the function of literature is not to describe the world, but to define a counterpart of the world capable of containing its violence and excesses. And similarly, the worlds of this literature create a counter-language which has a direct impact on the senses. So the fundamental structure of this function of another world, which meets the violence of the first worlds and makes it act on the senses, must be found on the doubling device in the production process of a perverse double of the world. This double is what the laws, in agreement with the psychoanal psychoanalytic tradition, calls phantasm. It is the concept of phantasm that occupies the center of the Lose's reading. In sadism, the phantasm is obtained by the process of negation of law, 
In masochism, it is obtained by the process of denial of the pleasure object and the suspension of the desire that leads to the movement to the moving towards the strange being simultaneously an impossible object and an absolutely real object. Sorry. Uh, ah. With masochism, coldness and cruelty, Deleuze is not only rebuilding the vision that since Kraft, Ebbing and Freud, psychiatry had of the pleasure in suffering phenomenon. Deleuze is also offering a new understanding of masochism in some of its most fundamental features. For example, the refutation of the sadomasochist complex as a unit. Sadism and masochism must be distinguished. The one who suffers in a sadistic torture is not a masochist. And the one that tortures in masochistic rites, rites has no pleasure causing pain. The use of the concept of sadomasochism is to take the complex pleasure and pain as a sort of a neutral substance common to both sadism and masochism. And the task is therefore to separate this complex from the inside and to discover the two sub substances or two essences completely different. The essence of masochism and the essence of sadism. In the singularization of each of these perversions, Deleuze points out that the pain of those who suffer is a masochist relationship in a masochist relationship has a different, completely different essence from the pain of those suffering in a sadistic relationship. This essence does not only concern the voluntary or involuntary character of the suffering, but the kind of relationship that it establishes between the torturer and the victim. This relationship cannot be defined as erogenous or sensual, such as the relationship on pleasure and pain, nor as legal or sentimental, such as relationship, conviction and punishment. It is a purely dramatur dramaturgical, dramaturgical structure. As Deleuze says, and I quote, masochism is above all formal and dramatic. This means that this peculiar pleasure-pain complex is determined by a peculiar, particular kind of formalism and its experience of guilt by a specific story, end of the quote. So Deleuze's book is always crossed by this need of clear clarifications and distinctions, which range from more literary aspects to issues such as the anthropology of desire, the nature of law, or the metaphysics of the negative. Another example, for instance, in what concerns the role of description in suffering, Deleuze suggests in what extent sad texts are demonstrative and obscene in themselves, being the pursuit of the full exposure of bodies and movements. And in Mesoch, there is a non-common de decency. Mesochism is not demonstrative, but dialectical. Excitement is obtained by expectation, by waiting, suspending something always promised, but never realized. And this decency explains why Mesoch was not a condemned author, but a honored one. Also, Deleuze distinguishes the negation as a partial process and the pure negation as a total idea. These two levels of the concept are present in Sad. Sad establishes an opposition between two natures, the primordial and the pure one, which is the foundation of life itself, and the second nature of the institutions linked by rules and laws. Sadistic violence is the process of negation of the second nature through transgression, through profanation, in order to achieve the original and pure nature. However, this negation of rules is destruction, the reverse of creation. Here, the negative is a partial process where disorder in order is, is another form of order, and the negation as total idea can never be completed. The masochist operation, on the contrary, is not a negation but a denial, and at, at three levels. First, ideal positive denial of the mother, a second level which is the annihilative denial of the father, and the third, which is the denial of the genit genital sexuality. As Deleuze draws the line between sadism and masochism, he looks for complementary points. So thus, he can show that to what extent these two regimes of pleasure exhaust the perversion field. These two essence of the exp experience pleasure pain which means these two perversions reveal the most intimate structures of the psychic field. And I'm just uh, sketching here.
The masochistic suspense is a function, uh, sorry, is a fusion with the object in its condition of an impossible image, where imagination and real meet. In masochism, fetish, which means the, the still image, the paralyzed mother image, becomes both the symbolic the imagination and the Lacan's real. The frozen image is both the law of desire, its impossible object, and the realization of the advent of pleasure. Against Lacan, and against his equivalence between the role of the father and the empty structure of the law, Deleuze proposes the autonomization of masochism, the equivalence between the role of the mother and the full structure, structure of the law. And because it is full, this law condenses in itself the three dimensions of the soul, law, desire and pleasure dimension. To this view, to this new version of the Lacanian trinity, uh, but where everything is condensed in the reality of a single image, Deleuze gives the old name of phantasm. He can, can thus say that in masochism everything is phantasm, everything is returned back to phantasm, and I quote, reality, as we have seen, is affected not by negation, but by, but by a denial that transposes it into phantasm. Suspense performs the same function in relation to the ideal, which is also relegated to phantasm. And waiting represents the unity of the ideal and of the real, the form of temporality of the phantasm. The fetish is the object of the phantasm, the fantasite, the fantasme, object, par excellence. There is no specifically masochist phantasm, but rather a masochistic art of phantasm, end of the quote. So, and to conclude, to understand the way that those things perversion is to understand the specificity he sees in masochism, its difference, difference with sadism. It is to understand how he reads masoch from the critical point of view, showing that masoch takes the phantasm as a genuine double of the world and how literature there, there arises as its ideal realization. Sad expresses himself in a form which combines obs obscenity in description with rigor and apathy in this demonstration, while the art of Mazok consists in multiplying the denials in order to create the coldness of a static suspense. Sad creates a literature of reason, of the cold thought, where, where rigorous demonstrations show that reasoning itself is violence and that demonstration itself is violence. Obscene descriptions give the sadistic the power of showing himself apathic, apathically all-powerful. Mazok is the inventor of the phantasm, the author of the imagination that multiplies the denials as a proceeding of his art of suspense. He denies reality in order to incarnate in suspense the dialectic ideal fantasme. He proceeds by multiplication of the denial as an ascending path so towards the intelligible. He creates pedagogical trials of initiation to this path in order to reach his ideal. Sad's obscene language and detailed description on one hand and Mazak's suspense and suggestive setting on the other hand, both serve to conjugate literature and sexuality. This is both clinical and critical plans. And among all Deleuze's work, masochism, masochism, coldness and cruelty, is perhaps the most clinical literary approach, where critical aspects cannot be understood without their clinical mirror. This book is an experience of reading the art of the novel as a perverse affair. Sad and Mazoc are always considered by Deleuze as major writers. So literature becomes a thought, a thought on world's epiphanies and novelistic configurations. In this book, for the first time, Deleuze gives the clinical function to the artistic creation and takes a writer as an example of the intrinsic link between literature and life, of what he will say lately, literature as a health affair. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Marina. Are there any questions you would like to ask? Yes. But as I understood, you are it's saying a, that Deleuze is at the same time critiquing 
Lacan, but but as I see it, it's it's simply follows. Well, I, uh, the, 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 the critic I pointed here was mm -hmm. specifically on the concept of the law. Mm -hmm. But, I, but this, uh, we cannot forget, of course, that this book is uh, from a period where Deleuze was very influenced by Freud and Lacan and uh, all the structuralism also, that will not be, that with, with which he will cut with anti-Oedipus uh, after. Of course, it is all this paradigm, even the phantasm as this creative uh, uh, dark precursor <laughs> Uh, is also a very uh, Lacanian and Freudian uh, interpretation, but um, which, with, for, for instance, with uh, uh, the concept of agencement, is the refutation of all this paradigm, of course. Uh, but but here is a it's a book of the early Deleuze, we can say. Yeah. yeah, but do you think that uh, this pattern of sadomasochism could be rewritten in affirmative way? In affirmative? In an affirmative way, because uh, ah, Lacanian like like psychoanalysis is based on ne negativity and lack, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this concepts are present in, in coldness and cru cruelty. But do you think that Deleuze could write another version? of coldness and cru cruelty after Antiochus? Yes, he talks it about in the Southern Plato's, he uh -huh. turns back to this uh, question. Again, with the concept of uh, agencement, I don't know how to say it in English. Assemblage. Assemblage, yes, I never remember the word. Assemblage. Uh, as a very, so cutting off all the impossible and all the question of the lacking and uh, but later, because, well, I, this is a part of the book, because in my book I try to explain a lot of different Deleuze's paradigms in literature, so um, this is the, one of the earliest, and of course, yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.